first of all, Geraldine, I'd just like to thank you for coming along today oh, to share your experience. It's my pleasure. So first, could I ask, did your mum often share her stories with you and your family about the time she spent at the concentration camp? Well, she didn't really talk about it very much till after my father died in 1986. We were very aware, you know, there was little stories that um, came out as we were growing up. I can't really remember what age, but I think maybe about the age of about ten, nine, ten, maybe. Mm -hmm. You know, we weren't allowed to leave food on our plate. Uh -huh. Everything had to be eaten and nothing was wasted, no food, everything that would be absolutely taboo to put any any food in the bin and my yeah. mother wasn't really um, very caring about when they later on when they had sale by dates if mm -hmm. it looked okay it was fine. Yeah. <laughs> um, prior to the war was what was your mum's life like? Um, was she s at school or was she employed? She was at school she and then she went to private English grammar school um, she was an only child and I think actually she was quite spoiled mm -hmm. and her father was um, quite high up, he was the manager of the Bohemian Union Bank in Prague and when she was I think about seven or eight she was they moved to a special block of flats which were for bank employees mm -hmm. and in fact we went back, my family, we went back, we took my mum back I think it was in 1993 um, and we actually got to see the apartment that my grandma and my mom talked about mm -hmm. um, and it was for you know it, it was a very nice apartment that hadn't really changed much in, in times so I think she had quite a privileged mm -hmm. life and being being an only child when she was at school did she recall a change in the school system after the Nazis and the Allies took control the, the, the um, indoctrination come into effect? Absolutely. It was became that Jews, it was totally forbidden for Jews to actually go to school mm -hmm. and later on um, they weren't allowed to go to theatre, cinema, mm -hmm. nothing like that was uh, was permitted any they, and they had to later on they had to wear when Prague was occupied they wore the yellow star you know that said Judah, Jew to so that people would see that they were a Jew and they weren't allowed, they were like the scum so. And obviously the real emotional strain that the Holocaust had on the survivors must have been immense. So could I ask how your mother coped emotionally with her experience? Well, I can't really answer that question, mm -hmm. how my mum coped. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. I mean, she was a, an incredible... She, her strength, she had amazing strength and stamina. And I think that's how she did survive all the years in the concentration camps. and very determined later that she was very stubborn as a mother mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, I, I, I don't know how she coped emotionally. She made, she was very easy to make friends with and she was very intelligent and mm -hmm. um, she spoke six languages fluently, a very intelligent lady and but I, 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 I don't know, she didn't share that, yeah. that really with us. It was, uh, um, I wish, you know, now, today that I had that we had been able to ask more questions, but mm -hmm. it was almost like you you didn't want to talk about it. Everything was hidden under the carpet. Yeah. Um, in 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 when I was growing up, in really, it was the war wasn't really. Brit Great Britain didn't really bring it out, and the the, the British government didn't really realize what was going on i think in europe what the, the 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 extreme nature of what what was actually happening and 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 my father managed to come to britain he came from germany from konigsberg and he his family managed to pay for him to get a visa to britain for it was a, a visa for one year's permit only and his parents and his brother never couldn't couldn't leave, and so therefore they were they were gassed. And I think that um, that because people didn't realise, people weren't willing to to bring bring them over. Yeah. Your mum in her video speaks of malnourishment being a huge issue. Do you think that the example of the Holocaust? could in fact help open the eyes to starvation in our modern world, perhaps thinking about to 
donate to charities such as Mary's Meals? I wish, I wish it could make people aware of people starving. Unfortunately, the world today in so many countries, look what's happening in Syria at the moment, and it's been going on ever since the Holocaust. I don't think the world has learned from from what happened in the late 30s and the 40s, and it's just continuous, a major problem throughout the world. And if people were more aware, it would be a wonderful thing. Absolutely. Yeah, of course, for most of us, the harsh reality of the concentration camps and death camps is almost unimaginable. Uh, may I ask, do you believe the Holocaust had an influence on your mother's faith? Well, that's a funny, a, a very good question. My father became, my mum married my father, and my mum didn't actually come from a particularly religious background. She didn't grow up in a religious way. Her her own, her, her grandparents, I think, were. But she, she wasn't. And because my dad became a minister, he was a reverend in the, she had unbelievable beliefs it, and it got stro grew stronger. I mean, my father died in, in December 1986 and, you know, she could have possibly changed after that time and not maybe followed the faith in such a, uh, to such a high degree. However, she continued and if not even more so. Yeah, she had, she had belief in God because I think I think I used to say to her, where was God in the concentration camps? And we, we can't really answer that. However, I think the fact that her life was saved and she had so many things that were kind of lucky that happened to her, that maybe there is a belief there, you know, she, she really did believe in God. Absolutely, that's incredible. Um, did either yourself or your mum either return to Auschwitz? And if any of you did, what were your or her thoughts on it? Well, my mum never ever went back to Auschwitz. I don't think she could have ever done that. Um, it was difficult enough when we did return to Prague. Um, it was very emotional. I actually got very, myself found it very, very hard. And because, um, however, Auschwitz, I, I would, one part of me would like to visit Auschwitz. I've never been but something just stops me from being able to go there. Wherefore my sister, I've got an older sister, and she went to Auschwitz many years ago with a group of people, with her husband, and she even managed to speak say, at, in Auschwitz for the group. And I just, t to me, I, I mean, it's wonderful that she went, but part of me doesn't want to go because today Auschwitz isn't what it was at the time of the war. When my mum and my grandma were in Auschwitz, a bird didn't even fly past because there wasn't a tree, there was not nothing green, only yellow mud. And today it's all manicured, it's been made, it's more for, it's, 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 it's not what it was. It's, I think it's wonderful for people to go and see. Part of me wants to go and part of me scared, I think I'm, I, I don't, I'm not sure, ask me in 10 years time, maybe I'll have been. <laughs> <laughs> and what about after the war? How did your mother start her life again? Did she find it very difficult to adjust to normal life after liberation? Well, my grandmother at the very end of the war, um, when they were in Bergen-Belsen, um, my, my, my mum, when the British Army came to liberate Bergen-Belsen, and because of my mum's knowledge, um, was so fluent in English, she became the interpreter for the British Army under Field Marshal Montgomery. And her, her mum was very ill with malnourishment and the, the Red Cross suggested that the best country for them to go to would be to Sweden, that they would get better medical care. So they were put on a boat to Malmo in Sweden. And there it was the Jewish community got involved with the refugees that were coming and they eventually, they made friends with a family who were the Sterner family. 
Mm. Who he ha they had a big shoe factory, and this Mr. Sterner had a daughter, Mira, who became my mum's friend. And sorry, and um, they they sort of got very involved and looked after them in event. And my mum started. Um, oh dear, my mum started. Um, doing some work she made like stuffed animals and eventually she made hand hand painted mats etc and different things and she had done a wee um course in millinery and she eventually got into a, she, she was sailing and she had her first sale and so she sold some of her paintings and she started earning good money and eventually when she was her mats, her hand painted mats, etc., she got them into a very large department store at the time. And eventually I uh, had various ladies, she employed a few people, which was amazing. And then my grandma, who was working as a milliner, she gave up employment to, to look after my mum. And eventually they bought their own little flat and they lived there for about six and a half years in Gothenburg and made lots of friends it's, and started a better life. And that started already, I think it was November 1945 that she had her first sale of her paintings. That's incredible. Um, have you heard of the survivor Eva Moes, Moes Kor? Um, she recently said that she forgives the Nazis for what they did. What do you think will you ever be able to forgive them? Personally, I can't forgive the Nazis for what they've done. Um, the only thing that I, because it's the only thing that I can see is that, at least to say that the SS, that sometimes one or two of them, they had a bit of humanity in them. They would turn their backs if they saw an elderly gentleman praying or different things going on. That they would, you know, try to 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 be a bit show a wee bit of care because. A lot of these men, they were forced into doing what they were doing, or they and their families would be obviously murdered, or because Hitler, as you know, was just so evil, so so evil. And um, finally, is there a particular message that you would like to leave with the young people here today? Do you believe that it is possible to fight and perhaps eradicate indifference, racism? hatred and anti-Semitism in our society today or do you think that that view is naive? I would love to see it could all be eradicated, love it, you know, but unfortunately there's so much hatred going on in so many countries in the world through religion as we all know with what's going on today. The one thing I would like to say is that my mum always, what she campaigned for, she always believed, it doesn't matter if you're pink skinned, white, brown, yellow, no matter where you come from, what you are, we're all flesh and blood, we're all the same, and we should all just love each other. It's so important, we're, you know, it's, I, I would love to be able to wave a magic wand and make the world a peaceful place, wouldn't we all? But unfortunately, I, there's too many bad and evil people that dictators in this world and I don't know how I, I would love to be able to know that answer. Thank you very Thank much you Geraldine. So much. Thank you so much for having yeah. me.